I've heard about these serialistic trajectories in Bommel mechanics. Um, what are these trajectories and why are they called serialistic? The term surrealistic trajectories was used for the first time by Englert, Scully, Zussmann and Walter in a paper dated 92. Their goal in that paper was to show that Bohmian mechanics does not make sense by providing an example in which the trajectory predicted by Bohmian mechanics is clearly different from the actual trajectory followed by a physical particle. In fact, what we found, what they found, is a remarkable example in which the Bohmian uh, trajectories are completely different from what we would expect. Now, textbooks are full of examples in which a quantum system behaves in a way completely different from what we would expect based on our classical uh, daily life. And among these examples, the surrealistic trajectories are in a sense a special case because the result of the experiment is exactly what one would expect, but just the shape of the trajectories is unexpected from a classical point of view, and therefore they might seem implausible. But now let's look at the example explicitly. So, consider an ion with positive charge and spin one half that goes through a sterner Gerlach magnet and then reaches a detector, a screen. Now the support of the wave function gets split in two parts that travel uh, along two different paths and I will call them red and blue. These two paths end at two different places on the screen. Uh, once on the upper half and once in the lower half. Now consider uh, two particles, also positively charged, sitting respectively uh, close to the red and to the blue path. I call also them the red and the blue particle. When the ion passes close to one of these particles, the electric repulsion causes the ion to deviate and puts the colored particle in motion. Of course, if the ion had only spin up, then the red particle starts moving and the screen gets it in the upper region. And if it had only spin down, then the blue particle would start moving and uh, the, the screen would, would be hidden in the lower region. Now we want to consider uh, a superposition of spin up and spin down with equal weights. In this case, both results are possible, but it is still true that the colored particle that starts moving is the one on the same side where the ion hits the screen. But now let's make the experiment more interesting. Suppose that before the screen, a second standard Gallup magnet is present, reversed with respect to the first one, so that the red and the blue supports are brought back together and cross before reaching the screen. Now the red wave function ends up in the lower region on the screen, uh, and the blue wave function ends up in the upper region. Therefore, when the screen flashes in the lower region, then the upper colored particle, the red particle, moves, and the other way around. Until now, nothing very surprising. But let's have a closer look at the Bohmian trajectories. In particular, it is interesting to look at the case in which the two colored particles have a very small charge. In this case, the kick that the ion gives to the colored particle is very small. Nevertheless, a long time after the ion reached the screen, the position of the colored particle will have changed by a detectable quantity, no matter how gentle the kick was. On the contrary, the recoil of the kick on the ion can be neglected, and the trajectory of the ion remains almost indistinguishable from that of an ion alone without the colored charges. These trajectories can be calculated and are such that they always stay either in the upper half space or in the lower one, never crossing the symmetry plane. This means that the trajectories that end up in the lower region on the screen were initially guided by the blue wave packet and, and later by the red one. Therefore, 
if the red particle moves, the Bohmian trajectories of the ion was in the blue support of the, uh, at the time of the kick. This at first seems rather surprising and is the reason why the author of this paper chose to call these trajectories surrealistic. But apart from the surprise, can we learn something from this example? Well, something very important. Our classical intuition suggests us to think of a Bohmian particle in a way similar to how we think of a classical particle. So, for example, we expect the ion to bring its charge along with its Bohmian position and the interaction between the ion and the colored particle to depend on the Bohmian position of the ion. But this is completely wrong. The only property of the Bohmian particle is its position. Every other property resides in the wave function. Therefore, every interaction happens at the wave function level and is independent of the actual Bohmian position. That's what the theory tells us. Bohmian mechanics is very different from classical mechanics.